Hello, my friends, how are you doing? I have another amazing tutorial for you. Today, we are going to talk about the difference between Unsharp Mask, Clarity and High Pass Filter. And I guarantee this is going to superpower your ability to adjust your images and get beautiful results. Let's get started. My name is Olivio. I'm a professional designer and I want to thank all of my patrons who support me and make these videos possible. Also, shout out to Roland who suggested this topic. Thank you very much for that. And I have a new special format where I show you how I shoot videos and edit them afterwards. Please check out this video. It's only five minutes long. It would mean the world to me if you watch it, give it a like, leave a comment with some feedback. That would be so amazing. And my Patreon supporters, they get the full editing, full length video, 58 minutes of me showing you how I edit and explaining what I am doing. And also I have my live stream on Sunday, 8 p.m. CEST. Check that out, get some live reviews and answers in the chat from me live. All right, let's get started with this tutorial. So let's start by talking about a mind blowing fundamental of photo editing. Every pixel in an image only consists of three different values. That is the hue, which means the color, the saturation, which means the amount of color and the luminosity, which means the brightness. And all the filters you have in photo editing actually only adjust these three values based on different kinds of algorithms. So for this tutorial, what it means is that sharpness is actually only contrast applied to your image in different kinds of ways. So different kinds of brightnesses are getting brighter and darknesses are getting darker. And the different methods are applied, for example, to the edge of an object or to a certain range of brightness that is found inside of the image. But there is not any additional sharpness added to the image because classic methods like these filters can't do that. In contrast to that, more modern methods like AI algorithms can introduce new sharper details that they are inventing based on what they are finding in this image. Next, let's look at the filters. So let's start out with clarity. Now clarity is a filter that applies contrast to the medium brightness values in your image. And because of that, it enhances the perceived texture of your image. Now, you see, when I move this slider around, you can go minus, which is reducing the contrast. You can go to plus values, which is enhancing the contrast. So look here at the bird feathers. Let's zoom in here a little bit. You can see right now they look rather blurry and then I introduce this and you can see I'm getting more texture here and they start to look a little bit sharper too because it looks to our eye as though we are seeing more detail. We're not seeing more detail. I guarantee you that it's just contrast. Now, also what I told you is that this is only adjusting the medium brightness values in your image. And when you look at this, when you look at the eye here, which has dark values, nothing is changing for the eye. When you look over here for the very bright values. You can see that nothing is changing for these very bright values. Now, of course, when I push this up, some of the medium values, like for example, here are going to become bright values because I'm pushing them up in brightness. So this is pushing up some of the medium values to get brighter and then pushing some of the darker medium values down to get darker. And because of that, I'm getting this kind of texture, this kind of medium contrast. And you can actually kind of simulate it when you look into curves here. So when I go here and I hold down all of these values by creating these anchor points, and then I switch this over to luminosity as the blend mode, and now I push this side up and I push this side down just for the medium values, you can see that I'm getting a similar effect. So this is basically what is happening in the clarity adjustment. And this is why it looks like the picture is clearer and has a bit more texture. Now let's go to unsharpened mask, which is a very interesting filter. And it has three different sliders to adjust. You have the radius, you have the factor, 
and you have the threshold. What do they mean? What is this applied to? And I want to explain this to you by the means of some very cute cats. So here you can see we have our threshold and we have our radius. Now the way this filter works is when I move up the radius like this, everything that is below that line will be included in the effect of the radius. So let's move this up a little bit more. And now you can see that these three cats here on the left side, they are below that line. They are included in the filter. But these cat on the right side, they are sticking out over the radius. They are not going to be included. And if you think about this as the details in your image, that means the smaller details are going to be included, but not the larger details, right? So now I have also the threshold. Now, when I move up the threshold like that, let's move it up to here. You can now see that this small cat is below that red line. So only everything that is above that red line will be included in the filter. Let's move up the radius a little bit more and then also the threshold a little bit more. And so now you can see that I have included only the three cats in the middle because the cat on the right is too big and the two cats on the left are too small. This is what a radius and threshold is doing to the details in your image. Let's zoom in here a little bit more. You can see here we have this line. So you can see that this is selecting out some details here with the radius and then with the threshold, you can see that I can limit the effect on what is included. So if I move this over too strong, you can see that again, the effect is not applied because these details are too small. Now, when you look at this edge here, it has a darker part and the brighter part. You can see this side is dark, this side is bright. When I move up the factor, what it does is it makes the darker part of my edge darker and the brighter part of my edge brighter, but only in the vicinity of that edge. This is why it's important to define the radius because we want to know what kind of edges do we want to tackle with this and how small should the details be. So you can see when I move it like this, I can only select this line here, but these parts here are not going to be touched. When I move the threshold down, you can see these are touched now. When I move my threshold up, those are not touched but my edge is still touched. So this is what that radius does. Let's go down here to the lack of this young man here. And you can see when I adjust this, let's push the threshold a little bit bigger. Look at that. When I move this, you can see that there is a halo. You see how this is starting to glow this edge because we are taking bigger and bigger parts into consideration around this edge here. So this is starting basically to glow. First of all, try to avoid these halos because it looks really bad. But also what is important is the way this is moving outwards. This is really important for us to understand the next filter that we are having. And that is our high pass filter. Let's turn this on here. And you can see here, I've only one slider, which says radius. And then also I have a monochrome setting below that. Now look at what happens to this area here where the lag is. I move up the radius and you can see how this starts to glow outwards. Do you see that? How this is growing around the edge? Because this is the radius that we have from our unsharp mask. This is exactly the same thing. But what is missing is the factor and also what is missing is the threshold. This only has one slider. Otherwise, it's the same thing. Now, the other thing that's important here is the reason why we are seeing this glow is because this is the exact same high pass that we are finding in our frequency separation. And frequency separation works with Gaussian blur. And when we are using Gaussian blur, the Gaussian blur is blurring the edge outwards. So this is the effect that we are seeing here with that filter. So you want to use this rather lightly 
now that we have this understanding of what high pass is and where it comes from, let's look at two other effects here. First of all, if I push the radius too far, you can see that colors are starting to look through that. In the end, when I push it up completely, I'm almost seeing the full picture. This is why I have the monochrome setting down here because it will turn our high pass filter back to black and white, back to gray values. Now, why is it important to have gray values? Because the way high pass is working is basically in the same way that a dodge and burn effect is working. So when we set this to soft light, you can see that this is applying a dodge and burn effect based on the gray map that we have created here. And as you know, with this kind of dodge and burn, every gray value that is higher or brighter than 50 or the middle of the gray values is going to brighten up that area and everything that is lower than the 50 value, so darker than a medium gray, is going to darken that area. Because we are creating this map through the high pass filter, we can apply a dodge and burn exactly at the locations where our brightness or darkness is happening in the image. And so because of that, the result from this is that we have kind of a mix between our clarity and our unsharpened mask because we cannot adjust the factor or the threshold. So when we push this up, you can see that at the same time we're getting a bit more clarity and we are getting a bit more sharpness in our image. So this is kind of in the middle and there is another added benefit to that. With the blend mode, you can select how this is applied. So soft light is the mildest of them, hard light is a little bit stronger, overlay is the most intense of them. And of course you have your opacity slider where you can apply how strong this is applied to the image. I hope you like this tutorial. Leave a like if you do. If you want to see more of my videos, subscribe and hit the bell button. Thank you for watching and see you soon. Bye. Yeah.